And what fancy hardware is that? I know. You're going to keep clean. That's, I like those little things. What They're, I'm actually doing is some people think I, uh, I'm protecting the wheels and tires with a wheel masker. A wheel masker? That's kind of but a funny That's name. not what I'm doing. Okay. This is marketing. I'm making the car look ugly. Oh, is that what you're doing? Yeah. So like, now it's ugly, and I'm going to make it look uglier. And okay. then we're going to work on it. But it's all about making it look ugly and then making it look beautiful. The big reveal. The big... Da, da, da. It does protect the wheels of tires, especially if you're using a rotary buffer, not so much DA's. You know, but I've only used those for like when I paint cars. I've never yeah. really thought about using them for detailing until I met you. If I was detailing full time, I'd get a set of these and I'd have my uh, logo? business logo stuck right in the center of each one and of them. And a phone number, big. Something. That. All right, we are back once again. And today, I guess him and I were kind of having a head to head battle. We're going to race. He gets one half, I get one half, and then we're going <laughs> to. See who wins. Actually, he's probably going to win. He's been doing it a lot longer than I have. But before we get going and I get over there for the little intro that we're going to be doing, I just want to thank you all for showing up again to another live detailing class. This is what, like our 10th or something? 7th like? or 8th. Yeah, it, it's 7th live. One's recorded for next week because we'll you both just, be gone. You just don't know how to be quiet. He just let the cat out of the bag. Yes, we both are on vacation next week, so there don't. Worry, the, we have a class already recorded for you, which will be going live on Thursday of next week, or Tuesday of next week, so what do you call it, you won't miss out. And with that being said, if you have any questions or comments about anything that you're going to be seeing here today, go ahead and pop them down in the comments down below, and at the end of the video, I will get back behind the camera and we'll ask, I'll ask all you guys those questions, so that way you guys can get some answers right away, and if not, um, if I don't get to your answer, I mean your question, we will get back to the comments later on and answer them up in there. And we do this every Tuesday at 3 o'clock. Every Tuesday at 3 Live detailing classes. Live! All right, so with that being said, I'm going that way. What's that? That's a bucket. We keep showing this bucket. It's important to have a, a clean place to put your dirty towels. Kind of an oxymoron, <laughs> ain't it? <laughs> it is. I need a clean, dirty place. I need a clean, dirty place to put All right, your so towels. let me go over here. Put my ears on so I can see what's going on. All right, Mr. Mike, tell me, what are you doing right there? This is called the Auto Geek cover-up towel. And uh, this actually came from the Mike Phillips beach towel tip. And uh, but usually when I use, always detail cars, I always like to cover up um, the wiper arms, the plastic fascia that's up there. Um, and also a lot of classic cars. I buff a lot of muscle cars out and they have a fresh air grill. So I want to just cover all that stuff up and uh, that way I don't got to come back and detail it later. Um, usually at the end of the day, if I've been detailing a car all day long, I'm tired. I don't feel like taking a toothbrush or anything and trying to get splatter dots. That's the little dots that fling out from your pad and get on to intricate things like wiper arms or down fresh air grills on classic cars. And that helps like that. Like your, your polisher compound does dust too. It, it, just, it, yeah, it just, you know, and plus I, I like the theme. I like to try to make my cars look as ugly as I can <laughs> for my before or my process or during pictures. And then the big reveal, you pull everything off, the wheels and tires, the outside's done. It's going to look great. So it's kind of a marketing aspect, actually. Do you bring like a little light? Ah! <laughs> a Something little like choir that. that comes behind you? Well, All right, what you got there? What you got? What are we? You know, we're going to go over, um, it's kind of a, a, a multiple a topic. Because we're going to go over um, once, what I always call one-step production detailing. Now, I want to share why I call it production detailing. It's production detailing because it's the opposite of show car detailing. Show car detailing would be obviously working on some sort of special interest car. I'm not saying that the Hyundai Elantra is not a special interest car. Oh, it but is. But it is kind of, I think, what most people would just consider a daily driver. Now, if I had a 68 Camaro Rally Sport down here... I would probably be doing two or three paint correction steps. That would be show car detailing. Um, after washing, after mechanical decontamination like clang, then I might be compounding, polishing, uh, doing a panel wipe and putting ceramic coating on. Multiple steps. And when you break up each one of the pro uh, processes into a dedicated step, you tend to get better results, okay? Um, but for daily drivers, um, 
you know, if you're doing this professionally, you're probably not pricing them out at super high dollars. You shouldn't be investing all that time and labor. So you want to master what I always call one-step production detailing. Production in a production shop, in a production detail shop, they wouldn't be doing three steps. They'd be doing one step. And that's where you use a great one-step cleaner wax. Okay, and there's an, I wouldn't say there's a lot of these on the market. I'd say there's a few of these on the market because my experience is a lot of the one step cleaner waxes don't use great abrasive technology and they micromar the paint. So what you're saying, there's a lot of them are on the market. There's only a few of them that are actually good. There's only a few that actually would make black paint look flawless. And, and, and that's the, a true test of a, of a one true step. True test. Yeah, any, anything that uses abrasives, compounds, polishes, uh, nowadays we got primers and what do you call an AIO or a one-step cleaner wax. Technically, this would be a one-step cleaner sealant because it uses a sealant instead of wax, but it's the same idea. It cleans, polishes, and protects in one step. All and, in one. AIO. And I would, but you know, if you look right, you can't scan your camera, but uh, there's a black hood over there. Well, hold on. I so can... I, I have what I would call the Mike Phillips black there panel paint test. There it is right there. I test everything on black paint. If it cannot make black paint look good, it's not going to make any color look good. It's just your eyes can't see the micromarring on lighter color cars. So uh, always be careful when you're using a product. You know, go with the brand you trust that uses great abrasive technology. Um, I trust this explicitly on everything. It's really, you, the only way you could cause a problem with this is to hold it over the hood and drop it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's not do that. <laughs> yes, I'll do that. Uh, anyway, so that's what one-step production detailing is. Now, I'm going to tie that into your packages. Now, I, when I teach my, my big uh, three-day classes or my two-day roadshow classes, um, I have a combination. About 50% of the people that come to those classes are just enthusiasts that want to learn how to work on their own car. Like some so, of you that are viewing this right now? Yeah, and 50% are people that either do this for a business or they want to start a detailing business. So. Doing this type of work applies to both groups. Let me explain how. If you're just an enthusiast and you've got a motorhome, this would be a great product to buff out the motorhome because then you're only going around the motorhome one, one time. time. <laughs> if you want to put a ceramic coating on a motorhome, you're going to wash it, maybe clay it, maybe not. I mean, if it needs to be clayed, you'd clay it. You'd uh, polish it, you'd uh, chemically strip it, then you'd put the coating on. You're five, six steps into that thing. You know, uh, so I mean, both, both approaches are good, but I'm just saying, uh, this is a good approach for things that are big, okay, that you only want to go around them once. Apply it, wipe it off, you're done. Mm -hmm. um, but for, for the guys that are doing this as a business, and... Um, this is the bread and butter step. Yeah. Oh, the bread and butter package. This is, is the, yeah, and the reason why is because even though everybody's heard of ceramic coatings and everybody wants one, not everybody wants to pay for one. And a ceramic coating, to install a ceramic coating, is going to take you more time, more labor, more chemicals, more towels. It's just going to cost you more money to do it, and you need to be charging more. And you're going to have a lot of customers out there that may want it, but they're going to pay for a one-step production detail. Right, and that's like your brother-in-law that you're talking about, um, that he had a coating, then he went away from coatings because he didn't want to do all the maintenance and then the, the, That's the right. fix it and stuff to get it back where he could just do a one step. My brother-in-law, uh, uh, he kind of likes a wheel and deal in cars. He bought a 1953 Buick Special Street Rod, base coat, clear coat paint. And we had it here in our uh, one of my big three-day classes. It was a training car. And my students uh, did the normal wash, clay, compound polish, panel wipe, ceramic coating. And then he took it into the body shop to have something done. By the time it came out, it was covered with overspray. And so now he, he was stuck with undoing the no overspray, spray. which meant he had to, what, put the coating back on? That was beyond his capabilities. He, on the other hand, is completely capable of buzzing around a 53 Buick Special with one step and a porter cable. So uh, he's a big fan of that. And that, that suits a lot of people's purposes. But back to our packages. When, if you're going to start a detailing businesses, a business, one of the things I see that new guys, they make a mistake because they don't have packages. They don't even think about packages. They, they just try to detail every car when someone calls them on the phone or contacts them through social media. And th that's just a big, that's a mistake. What you need to do is you need to have defined packages. Now, I always tell guys to start out with three. Keep it simple, three packages. Now, you can, you can blow this out and have 12 packages if you want to, but um, it's really best as much as you can to try to keep it simple. You don't want to tire someone's brain out as they're sitting there going through your menu, trying to figure out which one they want for their money. Just keep it simple. 
And as you get more experience, especially on the side of dealing with customers and addressing the needs of their cars, then you can start making your packages more tailored, you know, different packages. But to start with, here's what I suggest, three packages. And this is outside only. For inside detailing, you can combine that with the outside if you want to, but you're going to lose money more often that way. It's better to have a dedicated outside package and a dedicated inside package. And there's a bunch of reasons for that that I'll get to at the end of this. I want to get to the packages, though. All right. So for the packages, most guys, if you go up and, and, uh, and you should do this if you're new, you should go up and look at your competitors' websites and around the world around the United States. Don't just look at the guys in your hometown, but just look at other guys' packages and look at the names that they call them. And real simple ones would be like three star, four star, five star. You know, Gold, the more stars, silver, the more bronze. money, the more things they're doing. Uh, silver package, the bronze package, the, the gold package, the platinum package. You know, I see guys use that. When you do that, then in my brain, I got to start going, let's see, is gold worth more than platinum? You know, <laughs> I'm starting to think. You're making me think. Don't do that. So here's what I do. Package one. Fun. Package two, package three. We're back I just, to you counting again. I just use the word package to define that it's a package. And then I list the things I do in that package. I keep it really simple. And so for my package one, it's, it's a one-step process, one-step cleaner wax. Wash, clay, machine apply a one-step cleaner wax, hit the glass, and um, wheels and tires. That's it. No inside, nothing else. Plastic trim, maybe if it's got some, I don't mind rubbing a little something on there, make it look black. But it's really focused on making the paint look good, been washing and getting the car clean. And um, that's package one. Now package two is, for me, would be, um, that's when you jump up to a ceramic coating and that's one polishing step and then panel wipe and the ceramic coating. And then package three for me is if someone's bringing me something that's really bad shape and I've got to compound it. You know, compounding a car like this is going to take you two, three hours. Easy. Maybe longer. Depends on how fast you are. Plus all the other steps. So if, if someone brings me a car that needs to be compounded, we're up to 1,200 plus. And then anytime someone brings you an SUV, a van, or a truck, it's automatically $300 or more. And you can, you can make that even more if you want to. That's what I use. $300 or more. Someone brings me an Audi A5, it's $300 or more to any package price. So you need to dial in your packages, what you're going to do for the money. And, and a lot of this is based on how many hours it takes you to do it. And here's a good rule of thumb. You really want to try to shoot for $100 an hour. If you come just under that, you know, you're still close. You're doing better than the guys that are working for 10 bucks an hour, okay? But you want to be trying to get, if, if a job takes you five hours, it's 500 bucks. Eight hours, 800 bucks, about 100 bucks an hour. Because that's going to help to offset your wear and tear to your pads, your tools, your chemicals, you know, all your overhead. You can't just go by what you want to make per hour. You got to somehow factor in the overhead to run the business. And that's where you need to be Everything around 100 bucks an something. hour. I th I'm, I am confident if you were to ask any seasoned professional out there, they would agree with that price range in the $100 an hour price range. Okay, so for me, a, a package one is 500 bucks and it's, I can knock a car out in five hours. And uh, I, I love doing the package one because doing the coating is kind of a pain, but if someone's got something cool, happy to do it. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna do a package one to this, it's 495. And we've already washed this and I've already clayed it. Okay, a little shout out to PNS products. I used your soap, your wash mitt to get it clean. I and like your, that wash mitt. Your spray gloss to clay it. So I'm doing a little review for your product. So that's what we use to clean it. So the next thing we're ready to do is actually start uh, buffing out the car, but that always starts with a test, test spot. spot. And um, before we get to the test spot, though, there's one more thing. I, I'm looking at my little notes I made over here from the last video. Yeah, if you guys keep on wondering why he's looking away from I, camera, I don't because he has a things. big board. Well, it's it's uh, it's when it's when we uh, we didn't clay the car while the car was still wet. Yeah, well, that's the habit yeah, so do, or the, the downfalls of doing live. You kind of forget something. Forgot things. something. So that's okay. So I got my little notes here. So uh, as and you're doing this for a business, okay. Here's what you got to be careful with. You cannot promise to remove every single swirl and scratch out of the car with your package one. See, you're happy to do that. But that's package two or three. They're not paying for okay? it, people. If the customer brings to you a Corvette and it's really swirled out and they only want to spend about 500 bucks, you'll get out all the shallow ones that you know a normal eight-section pass will do with a pa polishing pad and a one-step. 
But all those deeper ones, you know, that's another package. We're not gonna, going for perfection. Just take more time. So don't don't ever be promising, you know, under promise, over deliver. Under promise. Don't promise. You know, if the, if the guy goes, this is what I want, though. Fine. Package two, Jim. That's what <laughs> we'll do. Okay. Damn so you, you got to, but you just got to learn not to be all excited when you're starting out and promise the world because that's what a common. It's kind of hard to do that because you want to get your Con name and your yeah, rep. You, and I mean, you know you're good, but you want everybody else to know you're good. But you got to be careful. Yeah, got to okay. make money. Okay, so then let's uh, let's just drive right into doing this. Woo! Now, let's go. Now, when it comes to using a one-step product like this, okay, um, if I go up into the internet world, I will see a lot of guys recommending foam cutting pads. And here's what I'm going to say about that. Yes, you can use a foam cutting pad if the paint is hard, maybe if it's on the medium side. But if that paint is on the soft side and you use a foam cutting pad, the pad itself will mar the paint, micro-mar. Just like bad abrasive technology, the sharpness of a pad will leave micro in the paint. If you buff out the entire car and you don't catch it, and you stand back when you're done wiping it off and you start to see these shadow effects or you actually see the micro marring, now you've got to buff it out a second time and now it's no longer a one step, you're losing money. So what I always tell people is what you want to do is you want to try to stay in that sweet spot. Not foam finishing, not foam cutting, right in the middle, foam polishing. Uh, for the flex here, I've got the Lake Country six and a half inch force hybrid white foam polishing pad. Over for the Rupes Mille, I've got the Rupes has three different color pads for the Mille system. I, I've watched the brand it's new announcement. It's in there, people. I swear it's there. Yeah, I've watched <laughs> the new video Rupes put out that they're getting rid of these pads. They're introducing a new pad line. We don't have it here. So I can only show you what is currently available you know, in the US or at AutoGeek, and they have a blue cutting pad, they got a yellow polishing pad, and they got a white finishing pad. That blue pad, most of you guys know when I say it's sharp, you know what I'm talking about, it's sharp. So it may finish out on a lot of harder paints, but not softer paints. So again, I just went right into the sweet spot, right in the middle, not too soft, not too harsh, polishing pad. Polishing pad for the Rupes Mille. And this uh, comes all over the experience of getting to know your pads and what they can and do. You know, and as you get experience, sure, if you, if you do a test spot on a car and you find you can jump on that with a one-step product and a foam cutting pad, by all means, go for it. If you find you can get away with a microfiber pad, I'd say that paint's probably pretty hard because every one of the fibers of a microfiber pad is going to cut that paint. That's another that, form of uh, uh, abrasive. It's another form of abrasive. That's why it's so hard sometimes to finish out with a microfiber pad on softer paints is because of the micromarring. But you can run into that on medium and even some harder paints. So try to stick with foam, try to stick right in the sweet spot with uh, foam polishing pads. Okay, now another thing I want to talk about in this video is gear driven. This is 8 millimeter gear driven. This is the, called the Beast. You can tell by the aluminum head, this is the original The Beast. There's now the Super Beast and the Sea Beast, but for speed, this is the Mac Daddy. This is the one you want. Uh, the, the Rupes over here, this is also gear driven. This is five millimeter. Okay, so same idea. Five millimeter. And uh, today before this class started, someone asked me, how can you tell the difference between free spinning and gear driven? When you take a free spinning tool, you can take your finger and just rub it like that and spin the pad. With gear driven, you've got to grab it and turn and you it. Hear it. Okay, <laughs> you can hear it, you can feel, but it ain't gonna spin just by taking your finger and tapping on that pad. And there's really only three legitimate gear driven orbitals on the market. There's the Beast, the Rupes Mille, and the Makita PO5000C. I've seen some knockoffs of these tools out there, but um, we're not going to go down that road. Um, <laughs> so anyway, when you're doing one percent yeah. production detail, here's the key. If you're trying to make money at this, you want to go as fast as you can. Let me grab a free spinning tool, and I'm just going to grab a porter cable so I don't hurt anybody's feelings. Except for porter cable now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's a porter cable. This is a great tool, by the way. Well, I love this what, tool. That's when most people started off on okay. it. Is one of here's what I mean by free spinning. Hold, hold on, let me get up close. Let All me right. put a pad on there so they can even see it better. Uh, get okay. Your focus here. Right. See that? Free spinning. I just stick my finger and just spin that thing. That's a free spring tool. Now these are great for newbies, for someone that's brand new, because if you push too hard on it, the pad will just quit rotating, you can't do no damage. The problem is, when you start buffing in the curves and stuff like that, the pad will start, stop rotating, now you're not doing anything. You're wasting your time. That's why I'm such a big proponent of the gear-driven tools, because when you pull that trigger, that pad is gonna oscillate and rotate, and nothing's gonna stop it. With this here, anytime it's not, if it's not rotating, physically rotating, 
you're not doing anything. You're, but when I say that, I mean you're not removing swirls and scratches. You know, you might think you are because it's sitting there vibrating, but it's not doing anything. So, um, you know, great tool, but it's just not the best tool for speed. And I have people, you know, All I, tools I, have special places. I answer questions on the Auto Geek discussion forum for a living now for going almost 11 years. And so many people come up and they buy a free spinning tool. And it's, look, they're great tools. They're smooth and there's all kinds of nice things about them. And then you see that they're asking a question or they're commenting, hey, I can't get the pad to rotate as I buff out a thin panel or go into a curve. That's the characteristic of a free spinning tool. You need to either learn how to hold the tool the right way, match the pad to the panel size, adjust your technique, bring your speed up. I mean, there's all kinds of things you can mess around and do, or just get it gear driven and forget about it. You just pull the trigger and go. Forget about it. And that's why I have this little coat goes like this with a, with a gear driven tool. I can plow through a car. Yeah. And let me share something else. I shared this at Mobile Tech this year, Yancey. All right, share away. When you use a free spinning tool, it requires two kinds of energy to buff out a car. Ooh. When you use a gear driven tool, it only requires one type of energy. Okay, and here's what I mean. With gear driven, I just gotta take and Make cord, sure it doesn't go cord over my shoulder, point where I want it to go and buff. And I just, uh, that my energy is moving the pad, you know, doing my section passes. With a free spinning tool, I do that, I gotta put the pad down on the paint and do my section passes. But now I gotta take my brain and I gotta watch the pad ah, and make sure it's spinning this. the whole time I'm buffing. So here's what I mean. This pad here has a mark on it and I gotta sit there and I gotta watch. Is it spinning, is it spinning, is it spinning, is it spinning? The whole time I'm buffing out the car. It's a mental drain. Is it spinning, is it spinning? Oh look, it's not spinning. What can I do to get it spinning? Is it spinning, is it spinning? It's a type of energy that you expend and it'll, it'll wear your brain out. And I noticed this one time when I was using the beast to buff out a car, I just point where I want to go and buff. <laughs> I just went. I don't got to <laughs> think about it, okay? So it's a. So you know, the moral of that story is using a force, you don't have to think as much. <laughs> you don't have to think as much, that's right. <laughs> and I'm naturally lazy, so it's a perfect match for me. Okay, so anyway, so that's why, look, if you want to detail cars to make money, get a gear driven orbital. And um, that way you can buff out a car as, fa as I like to say, as fast as humanly possible while keeping your quality high. That means no swirls, no holograms. Uh, I'll let you pick the brand. I don't really care. I'm an equal opportunity exploiter. If no, it works, say offender. <laughs> if it works, I'll show it. If it doesn't work, I will not show it. I will not rep destroy my reputation with things that don't work. Okay, so um, I have on here right now uh, the Lake Country foam polishing pad. And the first thing we want to do, like with any cars, we want to do a test spot. Test spot. And a test spot is going to tell me if the paint is hard or soft. And, um, and then it's gonna help me to dial in how many section passes I'm gonna make. Now, with your bigger panels, you're gonna make a crosshatch pattern. With your thinner panels, like this right here, here's a raised body line. Let the panel be here's your guide. Here's an edge, and here's an edge. I'm gonna let the panel be my guide. So I'm basically just gonna run this polisher up and down this panel. And because this is such a big, powerful tool, uh, this is something I show my classes all the time. I'm gonna do a test spot. When I go to buff out this hood, I will go from center to this edge, and I will take this whole section at one time. Now with normal- So you can with, pretty much double your size, your working area. At least double your size. With most free spinning tools, you're gonna work a section about this big. If you try to tackle something bigger, you might be able to run the polisher over it, but when you wipe it off, you're still gonna see swirls and scratches. With a gear driven tool, you can press harder, you can get more aggressive, and you can tackle a bigger area. Therefore, you can get the car done faster, and if you're doing this for money, you're making more profit that way. Uh, so anyway, so uh, I'll do the test spot first and this will tell me um, how many section passes I need to do. And we covered this in another video about counting. Remember that? Yeah. You Count won. your section ha, ha, passes. Ha. Okay. So counting your section passes is just real quickly. Here's what I do when I'm out here by myself buffing at a car. He if talks I'm, to himself. I talk to myself. I'll make a section pass and I'll count it, go the next direction. I count it out loud, count it out loud. I count it out loud the whole way through because if I don't, I forget where I'm at. Slow, Slow down. down. <laughs> You're like I going forget where I'm at. Because I'll be thinking, like the wife asked me to stop by the store and get margarine and eggs and milk. And then I'll go, gosh, how many passes was that? I don't know. I know. I'll do a few extra to make sure I did enough. And if you do that for every section, you'll have an hour easily into Added buffing out a car. Top. So count your section passes outside. Out loud. I, I tell you, people that do this, they get back to me and say, Mike, you're right. That cut down the time I spent on a car. Okay, so I'm all plugged in. 
ready to go. All right, let's do the test spot right up there and the, right by the front headlight. And uh, uh, show them. Here or, or here? Here. Yeah, right up in there. Okay. Get out your light so we can show them that, oh. you know, this car is trash. Oh, this thing's, yeah. All right, here we go. And there we go. See, it is not a perfect car. As you can tell, there are swirls. Move the light back and forth, will you? There you go. And you can see water spots in there. You can see... You yeah, know, it's a normal swirls. daily driver. It's, an, it's a neglected daily driver. After I wash this, there's no water beating anywhere. It's rough as can be. It's just, you know, some people are car people. Some, some people, people are, are not. You know, <laughs> it's just, that's okay. If it's just a means of transportation, though, look, the guy that owns this is going to get a free detail out of Mike Phillips and Yancey Martinez. You know? <laughs> what better, how much better can it get? Okay, so... Let's talk about some other things that are real important. I go up on the internet all the time and I see guys talking about pea size drops. If anybody's ever read anything I've written on this, I am such not a pea size drop guy. And here's why, especially on a neglected vehicle and especially when using a cleaner wax, you need a certain volume of product on the surface so you have lubrication, you got whatever chemical cleaners are in there working for you, and you got the abrasives working for you. If I put three pea sized drops on here, and I've seen some pros do this, and then they look stupid because after two or three passes, there's nothing on the surface anymore, all dissipated. But you want to put enough product on here that you got to film a product that you're working over the surface. So I describe the way you use this as use the ample amount or use the product heavy or wet. And that means use a lot of product. So All right. that is going to look like that. That. Zoom. And I know some guys are going, oh, that's a lot of product. Well, that's how you use a one-step cleaner wax. You know, this is going to take the place. Too, we're also doing a larger section. Yeah, we're, this we're is gonna going take to take the place of a compound, a polish, and a wax. I need a lot of okay, components that, that are working for me. Okay. Um, and I will buff out this entire section, but for the test spot, well, shit, I'll do, I'll do this half the hood. <laughs> well, I'll already do it. then. I'll do it. <laughs> I double dog dared you. And it works. If it doesn't work, that means I just need a more aggressive pad or work a smaller section, but let's see. So first off, spread my product out. Hey, Mike, hold on. Okay. Why don't, while here, what do you call it? Renato actually brought up a good thing, and I think that you can cover it here before, because this is a good place to cover it, is the proper way to hold a forced action, either the Malay or the 3401, so that way it doesn't walk from you. It actually oh teaches gosh, it. thank you, thank Here. you. Uh, yeah, uh, because the gear driven has a characteristic known as the walking effect. And when you're any, anytime you're using a gear driven tool, if you feel this thing trying to pull you a direction, that's telling you that you are not holding the pad so it's flat to the finish. So adjust how you're holding it. It's a self-correcting tool. And by the way, a lot of people always describe that walking effect as a negative characteristic. It's not a negative. It's just a, a characteristic. It's the benefit of all the power you get. You get the power. With the free spinning tools, it doesn't have the walking effect. But guess what? You don't get the power. Right. You know, so you know, there's always trade-offs on all the different spectrums. Well, would, that's the thing okay. I like about that is because it actually teaches you to, or okay. reminds you to keep your pad flat. Okay, so I've got this more or less spread out. Now I'm going to start counting. I'm going to do eight section passes. So. All right, everybody count with me, or with him. I gotta read. Right, one, one.
seven. <laughs> There's nine or eight. Eight solid section passes. It looked like you were pressing down pretty hard. I was pressing down hard, but that's one of the things I like about the beast is it's a beast. You can press down hard, and I, I want to press down hard because what I'm doing is I'm taking the pad and the tool and I'm pushing the abrasives into the paint and causing them to take little bites out of it, leveling it, and getting it over with so I can go to their side and do their side so I can go to the top and do the top. I want to get this over with. So I don't want to mess around with the free spinning tool. I want to get in there and get it over with. I want to get good results too. Now, all the different AIOs in the market are different, but I'm going to tell you, here's something that's really cool about this one. It wipes off incredibly easy if you just let it fully dry. So this is a benefit dry. of letting it dry. There is a benefit. Now you can buff out the entire car and wherever you see wax, you know you've been there, you've buffed there. So it kind of marks the trail as you go along. Um, I am gonna wipe off a section of this at least to show the before and after yes, difference. Yes, please do. And, uh, and actually, if you want, I could go grab the melee and do the other half and make sure we're getting the same cut with the yellow pad. Or we, we didn't do a test pop with that one. We could save that for you. <laughs> there we, I'll do it over there. I'll do it over anyway, there. Anyway. Um, uh, and actually, this will be my first time using the Rupes Malay. So okay, so uh, live, first that, time. But that is that is textbook example of how of how you can use the beast. Look, if you're new to this, then sure, work smaller sections like that. After you do that section, do that section, then do this section, and do this section. But with a, a tool like that, a gear-driven orbital, you can tackle a huge section as long as you're using great abrasive technology. You know, you've got the right pad for the job and you, you, you know, you're dialing, you've dialed in your test spot. Now this actually ended up being our test spot. So I'll tell you what, Yancey, let's pull it off and the wax off here. Let's see if this worked. Look at that, it's black. It's an ocean of black. Oh, wait a minute, we haven't bring eight, out the light yet. Eight section passes. Shine me some light. Oh, look at there. Look at there. Are we now dead? remember, is that good? No, that is very, <laughs> you're like, I can't Shit, see. That, that's, like, <laughs> that's like a brand new paint job. All right, no, you, give it back to me. Uh, now, you remember, there, you move it around just a little bit. You, you can still see that there's some randoms in there, some rids that are random isolated deeper scratches. I can see and, one right here. Yep, yeah, that's the one that I was looking at. Yep. But we didn't promise the customer that we're gonna be removing everything. This is a one step, all right? This is where you stop yeah. <laughs> and you what, keep yeah, going. They didn't pay for that. Up. Okay, and, and so just to piggyback off that, um, that was eight solid section passes. Whatever, the shallow ones came out first, the deeper ones, deeper swirls, deeper scratches remain. Those are called rids, random, isolated, deeper Explain scratches. Explain that a little bit for and them. And at this point, for me, at a package one deal, I'm done with that, I'm moving on. Customer comes back and says, what about this? You know, I, first, you know, here's what I do. I say, well, Jim, did you buy this car new? <laughs> and Jim will either say yes or he bought it used. So let's, let's pretend he said yes. Yes, I bought it new, Mike. Okay, well, Jim, whatever you're doing to put those deeper scratches in like <laughs> Stop this. Stop it! Quit doing it, okay? Because I only have so much paint to work with. The clear finish on your car is thinner than a post-it note. And I usually keep post-it notes with me and let them feel it. And I go, because this is a daily driver, Jim, we should probably just learn to live with the deeper ones and learn how not to put them back in. Now, if this was his Corvette and he hired me for package one, I would say, hey, Jim, the next time I come over, we'll do package two and I'll get that scratch out. We'll put a coating on this car. So, you know, you can always sell yourself and your skills and ability but at the same time, don't take the blame because it's his fault he put the scratches in there. And right, and a lot of this too is you, uh, a customer might come to you for the very first time and this is what they'll get. You know, they'll try you out, I guess you could say, mm -hmm. with their daily driver before they bring you in the rod, the street right. rod. Yeah. And the thing is, is now you're educating your client or your customer how to properly take care of their car so that way they can trust you with their That's right. car. And I always share the little tidbits on how to properly wash it and wipe and those things. Now, <laughs> bring that, it to me now, and I'll do it for now money. Now, when I'm back, so back to Jim. Jim, did you buy this? He, Jim's not happy with this scratch. So I say, Jim, did you buy the car new? And he says, yes. Now, what if he says no? He says he got it used. Then I say, Jim, did you get a good deal? Hey. And, and everybody always says, yeah, I got a good deal. And I go, well, that's what you get for a good deal, okay? You got some deeper scratches in the paint job because you didn't buy it new and take care of yourself. Now you got to put over the other guy's shoddy work. And I can't get them all out because you're clear ghosting in the post note. Now, just so you know, usually for the hood, 
I will go ahead and get the major scratches out. If I feel confident, I'll get them out because when someone comes to pick up their car, what panel do they look at? The hood. The hood. And so the driver's door. Under promise, over deliver. Make that hood What perfect. is that? One thing that you always have is the folk, higher on the highs, lower on the lows. What is that? I always say major on the majors. There it is, major yeah. on the majors. The major panel is the hood. So major on major means focus, get it, get it right. Okay, so you're gonna jump on that, right? Yes, I am. Okay, so um, I guess I'm gonna go to the roof then. Oh, you go to the roof? Let's talk about pads. All right. So again, we covered this in other videos, but look how many pads I got stacked up over here. Look how many pads he's got stacked up over there. Okay, this pad cut excellent when it was fresh and dry. Fresh, oh, dry, and clean. Story about okay. As, as I work around, this pad starts to get wet with the product, it's not gonna cut as good. So I could still keep using it, I'm not gonna get as good a results. It's gonna take me longer to get the results I am getting for each panel. Here's what's faster. Pull this pad off, put a fresh dry pad on. Not only will you work, get better results more efficiently and faster, your pads will last longer because you're not punishing on them. And plus it'll be more consistent. The yeah, the be results would be so much more consistent. Um, so, so basically, we're going to be doing a panel of pad. Yeah. A pad of panel, I should Yeah, say. so a two-door car, on average, just a good rule of thumb is one pad per panel. So a two-door car has nine panels. Uh, if this is a four-door car. It's got 11 panels. And, uh, but for me right now, I'm really happy with these results. I'm going to hit this panel, and then I'm going to go ahead and go up to the roof. And here's another tech. With the same pad? Or are you no, I'll switch pads switch. after that section okay. right there. All right. Anytime you're working on a car like the hood, the roof, or the trunk lid, and you, you have to reach out, you always want to start in the center and work out. So if you're going to do a section, you do it here, and then do one here. You wouldn't do it here. And go the other way. And then go to the center. Always work from the center out. Then also remember, people, we have our clean, dirty towels. So all of our towels, when we're done, we'll be putting that. Now we'll just take, what I'm going to do is, I'm pretty sure that's what he's going to do too, is he's going to take his used pads, and put them down on the bottom of our tray so yep. that way they're out of the way before we go to our next one. All right. Yeah, keep your pads clean. Keep your pads clean. All right, so we good? Yeah, we're good. I guess all this right. is the part that's like watching paint dry. Yeah, this is the paint. All right, we have, I said under an hour, and Siri, why do you want me? It says this, I got a 340. 340, I got 337. So we'll so be done at 440. We'll be done before that. One step production. Let's go. So I did this half of the hood, what? this panel here, I hit the headlight and this little section right there, that pad's done. Also, here's another thing I always like to teach guys and practice myself. Whatever my first step product is, I use on all the glass. True. Okay, so if I'm going to compound a car, polish and put a coating on it, what's my first step process? Compound. The compound. If I'm going to use a one step cleaner wax, what's my first step process? Compound. The cleaner wax. Cleaner, cleaner wax, same thing. Okay, so whatever my first thing is, I use it on all the glass. Right. The glass, glass doesn't really care what you use on it because we're only doing what's called topical defect removal, just Yeah, we're not polishing stains. out the glass. We're not getting we're, scratches, scratches out, we're out. just getting the, the films off. Right, Clean, okay. cleaning it, a deep cleaning, to put it that way. Let okay, well you finish up here, I'm going up high.
And since I didn't do a test spot, this was my test spot, so I'm gonna make sure that what I did actually is doing what I want it to do. And that is the same. Which at the end of the video, I'll bring you in so the difference between the two. But I gotta catch up with him, he's already ahead. But it worked good. Actually, I like this. The only thing is, it's getting a little locked. This um, one more technique tip. Um, it's, it's best to use a crosshatch pattern when you've got a big flat panel to work on. When you've got to fit and then do minimum eight section, minimum eight section mm -hmm. passes. That's what it's going to take for the abrasives to remove enough paint to level the surface so it looks good to your eye. Minimum eight. When you're working a long, thin panel, I usually bump that up to 12. So it looks like one, so. two, three, four, five or six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So that's how I count out my section passes for a long thin panel. He's at the front, so I'm gonna start at the back. Seven. Eight. Eight solid section passes. I did about two thirds of the roof up here. I did the I did one third of it back here and worked around the, the antenna here. So I'm gonna, next I'm gonna do what's this A pillar part here. And I'll probably, I usually divide this like here's a section, you know, here's a section, here's a section, and here's a section. And that's when you do the 10 to 12 just back and forth. Gotcha. And I actually like the Malay. I like the slow ramp up speed. Yeah, that's, that's nice. A, that's kind of nice on there. Like I said, the only thing, it just took me a little while to get used to the, the lock. It's a well-designed tool. No, it's actually, first time you're using it, I kind of like it. Kind of digging it. this right in the center, right there by the hole.
He's like Count Dracula over there. One hamburger. Two hamburger. They probably can't hear you. Every car body panel is different. So a lot of times, you know, I look at things, you know, what is above the waistline, what's below the waistline. This one has a body, a body line in the door right below the mirror here a ways. So for me, it's going to be easier to go ahead and buff out the tops of this while I'm standing and then knock out the lower panels on a roll around cart or a roll around chair. Um, since I've only used this pad for this, a long nated A pillar. I don't know what else to call this thing, cell panel that bleeds into the A pillar. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use this. And if you look, this thing's got, this thing's got uh, pinstripes on it. These are vinyl graphics. A lot of people ask how to work around those. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna buzz over them lightly. I'm okay. using a soft pad. It is already wet with product. And I'm using a, a, a one step cleaner wax that uses great abrasive technology. Now I'll tell you, Do one up here. Um, on the front fender, so that way I can show. Okay. If, if you were using, you know, I always say, I hate to say this, but if crap for abrasive technology, not only would it micromar the paint, but it'd probably tear up the vinyl graphics. So, you know, you really got to do your research and buy stuff that uses great abrasive technology. Don't use junk. Quality products get quality results. Okay. One, two, three. Okay, so I, I made a few passes just over that. Now I'm just gonna drop down and do this section below it. And the rest of this I'll get on my roll around. Okay. And that's all you really need to do to knock out this section of paint here and take care of the paint on both sides of the pinstripe and also clean up the pinstripe, make it look pretty too. Okay. You make that look so easy, Mike. Another tip for getting a job done fast is put is your cell phone away. Uh, well, I was over there making sure we had audio and everything was still going.
Okay, so I did the top part of the pinstripe, the bottom part of the pinstripe, and kind of fluttered over the pinstripe a few passes. What was that? It says I buffed out this section of paint on top of the pinstripe, 12 passes, the section below the pinstripe to the body line, 12 passes, and in the course of doing that, kind of fluttered over the pinstripe just a little bit, cleaning it up. You fluttered? I fluttered. <laughs> over here, I schmooed. You schmooed and then you fluttered. Same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, product. I'm going to be the disappearing detailer now. I'm going, or you probably can't see me, but you'll hear me. Black them off. section right here.
new fan. Okay, deck lid or trunk lid, back window glass, and then vertical panels. What was that? I says, I'm gonna do uh, my half of the trunk lid, my half of the back glass, then vertical panels. Oh, you know what? I totally forgot to do the glass. I got all the glass except for the back glass so far on my side. Okay, this is a section pass, right? The cross hat right here. One. That's called the smudge technique. Six, seven, eight. Back last. Usually on the glass, I do like four section passes. I did like five. Yeah, because you're not really trying to take scratches that just take film off. Oh, well, well, it's real quiet for a second. That glass was dirty. Yeah, a window trim, right? Yeah. So, um, and the, one nice thing about the black fire is it really doesn't stain anything as long as you just wipe it off in a decent amount of time. So kind of back to um, how big of an area can you buff if the body panels you're working on have predefined sections. So here's an edge. Here, hold on. Let me get on the camera and I'll zoom Here's in a raised here. body line. Sure. Okay, let's get you in where he's talking. All right. Okay, so if, if a body panel, when we're talking about how big of an area to buff, you kind of let the panel be your guide. So I buff this section below the pinstripe to this raised body line, this, this body design line. Now I need to go from here to the edge of the fender lip. And when I wash this car, I wash the fender lips really well so I didn't risk pulling any dirt in here up to my buffing area. But I'm gonna go from this body line to the edge and then here's, a, here's an edge here. So this separates the, the rear fender from the rear bumper cover. So that's my section. You know, I, I would like to go bigger, but I can't go bigger because it's kind of already got me into these divined hard lines. Uh, the bumper cover, you know, because it's got a curve, it's easier to kind of do this section than that section. Then there's a section back here that you can't see. When it comes to the door, uh, for this video, you know, we're just going to reach what we can get. Normally, Yancey, and I don't know about you and the rest of you guys, but to get these really lower panels, I would just go ahead and sit my butt on the ground and buff them out that way. We don't have a hydraulic lift here at Auto Geek's Show Car Garage. It would really make things easier <laughs> if we did. Uh, so I do what I call a lot of butt time. Butt time is anytime you gotta get on your butt and do work on someone else's car, like clean their wheels and tires, buff out these lower sections. But I think you guys get the idea of how to tackle this car by the panels that we are hitting. But anyway, so I'm gonna start here and then work my way forward. 
All right, I'm gonna hang out here and watch you do the rest of the car. No, no just joking. All right, one. Now you guys will all be two, sleeping at night going one, two, three, four. I need four, like make an animated graphic that has that. Five, one, two, six. How many pads have you went through over there? Mike. What's that? How many pads have you went through? Um, I'm one, two, three, four. I'm on my fifth pad. I'm on my fourth. One, two, three, All right. Four, and yes, Nicole, five, I picked up the polisher. Smart Alex. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And unlike Mike, I know he does the entire top and goes all the way back. What I end up doing is just me, my thought process. I turn around and I do the top like he did, but when I start on a door, I just continue the entire door all the way down. I start at the beginning and then I go all the way to the back. Where I know he sectioned out the top part, then he went to the bottom part. I just kind of do as section goes down. Both, both ways are right. You can start. Okay. Some more product though. I need me some more product. Hey, uh, you missed the spot back there. <laughs> Just gonna say, but I am liking this polisher though. The only thing is the trigger's a little bit different. A little I know bit you harder can buy to get one. used to, but. I know where you can buy one. Come on, cord, get back over here. There we go. Two.
Need more product. I'd be interesting to see all of you guys that are watching. What's the fastest that you did a one step on a park? Um, post it down in the comments below and see how long it usually takes you to do a one step on a car this size. How long would it take you? Curious to see what you guys would say on that. What are you doing over there, Mike? Did you miss a spot? <laughs> uh, driver's door. Just did the driver's door handle. Whoa. I kind of broke that into, I'm going to break this into three sections. This section, that, and this. You know what we didn't talk about? What's that? Is the inspection form with the client. We'll have to get that the next time. All right. That's important. Got the handle, this section below the handle. Now I'll take this whole section right here in one time. People, I'm really not doing anything over here. I'm just running the polisher over here and <laughs> really not doing anything. Yeah. You can't see me. That's what I figured. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice feature, it has little legs to keep it from tilting over. Did you have it on your side? Did you tell them anything about these? No, I didn't, and I wasn't going to do that whole bottom section. Okay. I'll save that for the owner. Okay. But in the real world, I would do it. Yeah, what I'm talking about is there's some sort it's, of a... It's a rock guard. A rock guard on yeah. there and stuff, so yeah. I just got to that point on the other side. You can buff it, it won't hurt it. But well, you're supposed to take on rocks. It can't. It should be yeah. able to take on a buffer, right? Yeah, but you leave a little wax residue you got to dig out later. Now I lost count. Oh, I see. You're welcome. I'm going to guess I was on four. You're going to guess? It's not my car. <laughs> Darn cord's gonna kill me. I do like this trigger though. Now that I'm getting used to it, you can kinda feather that polisher. It's kinda nice. Hey, Ruf, Rufus did a good job of engineering it. Engineering? Yeah, they engineered it. Is that, what, is that the technical <laughs> term? <laughs>
Bueno, eh. Like the pop the weasel polish you, man. One ha 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 ha. Two ha 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 ha. Three ha 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 ha. I had a glue, so I had to unglue it. That's technical term for getting a glue on there. All right, lost my chair. All right, you got the front. I'll do the back. You what? got the front. I'll do the back. Yeah, that sounds good. All right. Maybe I should have let him do the back. A lot more than there was on the front. And you're going over the headlights too, right? Mike, you're going over the headlights too? What's that? You're going over the headlights too while you're I, up there. I got them. Yep. They're right. done. I'm going over the taillights, which you guys can't see, but I'm going over the taillights too. You get those taillights, boy. <laughs>
work. There's more fire. Man, you missed a big section. You didn't even get this all back here. What the heck? Man. Okay, I'm officially waiting on you. Oh, that's rude. <laughs> well, I'm almost done. Almost done. Let me count how many pads I went through here. You didn't go through enough. Oh. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six pads for one half the car. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So a little bit less than one pad per panel. So what I really like about that easy wipe off is after say you've done a car like this by yourself, yeah, you're tired. <laughs> Who wants to wipe something off that wipes off hard? All right, I went through six pads. How many six did you go through? I went through six pads, seven pads, six oh, pads. Oh, you're one pad. I can't count. I went through some pads. But you should just, all right, was he not counting that entire time? No, I counted almost early. Right. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six pads. Six pads. That's what I went to, too. Okay. Oh, actually, you know what? I need to, um, I, I need, need to, to wipe through. this off. Well, that too, but I gotta oh, get it. Oh, man, I gotta get it easy. Hold on, let me, let me slide in here real quick. Oh. The joys of other people's cars. I think I messed up my clipper, do. Oh, way to go. I'm hot. All right. Okay. All right, let me double check his audio. All right. Testing. Testing. Hey, I hear you. Okay. Yeah, look how this just wipes off so easy. I am looking at your guys' comments. Guys, I swear we will be back and we'll get all your comments here in a little bit. Let's just let us finish. Oh, time. Wipe. It's uh, 4.20. So, so we together knocked that out in 40 minutes. 40 minutes. See? Under an hour. Well, we still got to wipe, so about an hour. If I was by myself, just multiply that uh, hour and 20 minutes to buff out this car. Eh, call it two hours because I spent a little bit more time. Oh, are you saying I didn't spend enough time? No, is that no what you're I'm doing? just uh -huh. saying, watching two guys buff out a car on TV or on video is like watching paint dry. Well, technically it's like watching polish dry. <laughs> 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 Sorry, bad joke. 
These, by the way, are all pre-inspected, as I describe in my video on inspecting microfiber towels. It takes hours to buff out a car, it takes seconds to put a scratch in. Voila, voila. Okay. Turn around and put this over here. Get to me this. Come to the dry stuff. Work to the wet stuff. Then as you can tell, what do you call? I'm gonna do the same thing Mike's doing. The microfiber in each hand makes things a lot easier. You're not putting fingerprints all over the place. Or if you want, you always can get the microfiber gloves and glove up too. Isn't that right? Mr. Mike. Yeah, I like the gloves. Then this way too, you get to do Mr. Miyagi. Wipe on, wipe off. Looks good. From what I can tell already, it's, it's got a new car. <laughs> so if we wanted to do something extra to this car after using a one step, what can we do to give it more protection? After this? Yeah. You could put a quick detail or spray wax on top of it? Mm, you could, but I wouldn't. Well, what would you do? Well, I put a non-cleaning product on it. So we use the cleaning product to clean a wax. Oh, like a spray wax. Well, I'd do, something more, I'd do something more substantial. Like what? There, there are some spray waxes on the market that are substantial, I'll give you that. But I would probably tend to keep it in the family and put the, a layer of the Black Fire Black Ice down. No, yeah, no, a regular wax. It's in synthetic sealant. Mm -hmm. It's a hybrid. And then you're putting just a pure layer of protection down. But I mean, there's a lot but of that's parts. again, did they pay for it? Yeah, well, I'm, I might do it just because I'm a nice guy and got to protect your reputation in the detail world. He's one and done, but, but, take it out the door. But even if you just did, uh, where does all the, what panels take all the damage? Just the roof, the hood. Roof, trunk, and? The, the top sections. The horizontal surfaces. Oops, let me flip this over. But I do like that Malay. I have to say, that was the first time ever using that. It took me a little bit to get used to that trigger, but once I got used to that trigger. You gotta say it like this Malay. Oh, is that it? Malay. Malay. <laughs> but uh, once I got used to the trigger, because I kept on holding it, then I'd turn around and I'd bump the little stop and it'd come unlocked. But once I figured how to properly hold my hand over there. Man, that wax wipes off easy. Uh, I like the way that. Um, you can feather the trigger. Yeah, they did a lot of good engineering on there. That was kind of nice. Then you did tell them to break small workout instead of trying to take big swipes. Oh, we didn't cover that. We'll cover that another time. We'll do. Ooh, there's a video. Proper Most important thing. Techniques. Is clean inspected towels. I put a lot of focus on towels in 2019 and 2020. It's something we all all have to use. No matter what brand of tool you may like, we all got to wipe stuff off. That's so the, the final thing. Actually, I missed a spot right there. You can stay late. <laughs> Dun, da, da, da. Dun, 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 dun. Give me a couple new towels. But yeah, I definitely have to say this is a drastic improvement from what this is. And oh yeah. As soon as I, um, we get this all wiped off, I'll, I'll bring the camera in close and we'll put the swirl finder light on there so that way you guys can actually see the differences. But for an hour's work, 500 bucks, do a couple of these a day, you're in making some money. My, my favorite, you know, I know coatings are real popular. I keep a coating on my own car, but someone comes to me and says, yeah, I just want to get the one step package. Yeah, I like it. It's because the product is so easy to work with. I mean, it's just, it's just. Yeah, we're not struggling to take this wax off. I mean, it's been sitting here drying, well, for 40 minutes. First time. Um, but 
I'm not struggling at all to wipe it off. It just comes right Well, normally off. with like a compound or polish, you'd want to wipe off as you go because it could get so hard on the car, then you're really working to get it off. Now, um, all right, that, since we're wiping, we've got nothing else to do. Say you were wiping up, uh, off a con, uh, compound and you did let it dry too long. What would be a good way to get that off? I always just grab some glass cleaner because I always have glass cleaner out here. And glass, most glass cleaners are about 10% alcohol and the water and the alcohol and the, the surfactants that are in there, they just help to break up the dried product so you can wipe it off. So instead of taking something that's really simple and making it complicated, I just keep it simple. Could you turn around and say you're buffing and turn around and take your pad over the top of it? Would that help or would that make it worse? Um, yeah, you could reliquify it with the same product in the pad you're using. Just okay. come back and rebuff that section real lightly and then wipe it off instantly. So it'll let a bunch of time go by. Okay, so um, I, I'm looking down here. I mean, this is absolutely swirl free. And you guys on camera saw me just sitting on a stool using the beast. And I made, I made eight section passes over that and it's swirl free. So, I mean, it's, it's not just the beast and it's not the pad. It's just the combination of all of them. Gear driven, no pad stalling. Um, high quality abrasive technology. I counted out my strokes, so I, I didn't do more than eight, but I didn't do less than eight. And I think we got lucky with this car. I would say this paint is not soft, it's not hard. Yeah, it's, it's kind of nice. It's right in that sweet spot, right where you want it. You know? It's workable. The average person could work on this car. You know, you get some of these cars out there that got really hard paint, and it's kind of a disservice to the owner if the owner's a do-it-yourselfer and has dreams of going out and working on his car on a Saturday and he, it's so hard not even a pro can work on it. You know? Or it's so soft that he's afraid to touch it. Well, it's so soft you put a scratch in it every time you wipe it with a clean towel, yeah. All right, let's uh, bring them in here so that way they can see. By and the way. Me, common courtesy, huh. always come back, wipe out the door jams. I did that after I washed it. Oh, well, uh, for polish residue? Yeah. Sure. Uh, since you brought that up, some guys like to clean door jams when they wash the car. Usually what I do is there's enough water there after washing the car. I just take whatever drying towel I'm using after it's already wet and then wipe everything out. Here, I'm going to open that door so we can open the, the you uh, hood. You missed spot. Okay. The hood. Nice work, Yancey. You can do my car next. Ah. Only if you do my car. Your car's the wrong color for me. My car? Yeah. It's, Shh, my car hides. It's a dark, everything. It's a dark color. I'd, I'd actually have to do a good job. <laughs> I got the granite gray uh, scat pack. And I'm telling you, that color doesn't get hot, doesn't, you know, doesn't like stand out, blends in in traffic. And I'm telling you, Dodge paint, it is, a nice is like this. You can work on it. It's nothing like hard, nothing insane. Okay. And yet that that metal flake and that granite just hides everything. So I can go away. Look at you, yeah. you're missing Come spots. Look at this. See it? Look missing at, spots. See it? See how perfect it is? One step. Yeah, here, let me um, get the camera in there so that, that way they can see it. Um, actually, do me a favor, open that door. There you go. All right, hold on, let me bit my, get my ears on. All right, can you talk for me real quick, Mike, so I can make uh, sure? Testing, one, two, three. All right, gotcha. You'll have to tell me where I need to put the light so you can catch this. Um, you can just put it back right there. All right, look at that, people. Look at that, how that flake just pops. And on camera, I, this, this car had equal swirls everywhere on it. I counted out eight normal section passes. All right, go to the hood, where we were at before. <sighs> And look at that, it's just, oh, you missed a spot wiping, I see it. Where? <laughs> right where, you're, I can see it, right, right. <laughs> or maybe it's the light. Actually, no, it's the light. Let me see. Yep, that's the light up above. 
or actually it's the sprinkler is what that is. So what you're seeing there isn't as much people as the light. Um, but look at that deep little flake in there where before I was, couldn't really see that. No, it came out good. All right, let me zoom out. Zoom out. So we hit glass, headlights, tail lights, all the paint. Uh, even if we stretch it to right now, wiping the wax off, that's less than an hour. <laughs> well, add in the, the wash. So what took you like, well, you did the wash yourself. Yeah. So. Yeah, I did at least an hour wash. So uh, I mean, the polishing hour. step is definitely, we, we showed that you can get it done in under an hour, but the entire process, you're looking at, you know, if you're a small car like this, you're looking at probably like two hours. But $250 an hour if you're charging $500. Oh, I'm, I'm usually five hours into something like yeah. this by myself. So it's yeah. 100 bucks an hour. Yeah, so I mean. I, if, if in the real world, I would have went along the bottom on my butt and got the lower, all the panels, everything. I would have done a better job on the front. It's just I know what it looks like on camera to watch somebody buff out a car. It's not the most exciting thing. <laughs> So we just did a quick. We might have filmed a couple of those before. But some key takeaways, you know, count your section passes out. Use the body panels to tell you how to buff them out. You know, the, the long, thin Which panels, you know, just run the polisher up and down the panel. Um, working around door handles, the mirrors, all that kind of stuff. You might as well pull your wheel masker off. So we made it look ugly, and now's the reveal. It looks beautiful. Dun, and, dun, da, da. and that's it. Yeah, it's any worse good. All right, let me. Any questions? Yeah, I'm going to get to the questions here real quick. Just trying to make the set look a little bit better. Because I want you guys to be happy out there. OK. Let's see where we're at in here. Ba -ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba. All right, I'm gonna scroll back up. Wow, you guys were talking. Uh, that would add $500 to the resale value of the car. What? If, you, if a guy wanted to sell this car, instead of selling it the way it was. Oh God, yeah, definitely. You know, that is one video I've always wanted to do, is get, get a beater, go get it appraised, yeah. and then take it back and see how much more they give you. Yeah, I, uh, I'm happy to t say that Every time I've traded a car in, the dealership always says, wow, this car doesn't need to be detailed. Yeah, you know? I kind of pride myself on that too. <laughs> or when you get one, they're like, oh, we'll take it back. I'm like, no, I got it, I got it, I got it. That's how you take yeah. care of your cords, cowboy style. Don't do the water ski wrap up over water your arm. Water ski wrap up. Yeah. All right, I'm, wow, you guys were talking a lot while we were away. Um, all right, I'm at the beginning. All right, Mike, get into the frame if you could, please. Sure. All right. Where are you going? Oh, you're uh, going way uh, over there. Where do you want yeah, right here? Right over there. Okay. That way I can pop things up. I'm trying screen. to put some stuff away, too. Remember, we're going on vacation. All right. Sorry, I had to pull a quick focus there, people. All right. Let's, where am I? Here I am. Hi. I'm the invisible detailer on the other side of the car. Um, ba, 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 ba. Bradley Poston, yes, one of these days I might have to bring my guitar in. Um, ba, 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 da, ba, da, ba. All right, George Cl Clavena, Clavena, Clavena? Sorry. Let's just go with first names. All right, that works. If the car has been coated with G Technique with CSL and XO about 18 months ago, do you, and you want to refresh the finish with minimal swirls and Mars, how would you? How would I prep the finish? Sonax, uh, Sonax EX0406 or other suggestions? Does 3D1, it, it went away before I was done. Well, here's the deal. If you're gonna abrade the, the, the finish of the paint, you don't know if you've left coating on or taken coating off and you wanna err on the side of caution, you probably just took everything that was left off. So you wanna use a fine cut polish, then you're gonna to have to chemically strip, put the coating back on. All right, so what about, he's like, would you, I don't, God, I cannot Which talk. product would I go with? Would you prefer um, a, a 0406 by Sonex or like a 3D1 with a more abrasive polish? Uh, you know. Or it just um, depends on the paint. And actually, what those two products are kind of the, the same, same as far as their cut goes. Okay. Um, the, the thing I would do is, cause some paints react differently, is I'd do a test spot. If you have to buy a product, 
you know, you flip the coin because those are both really good products. Okay. Uh, they're both they're both what I would call a medium cut. Well, the 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 3D one obviously is a compound polish. You can turn it into a compound by using an aggressive pad, pad. aggressive tool. The EX04 it's kind of limited on its cut as a cut of four. That says it right there on the bottle. So it's a medium cut polish, but finishes out like a fine cut polish. So I'd give the edge of the 3D1, if you want to be more careful, go with the EX04. Okay. Or there's a lot of primers, surface primers out there now, like Dr. Beasley's. Okay. You know, um, the last two cars that I've coated, I've used Dr. Beasley's 90 and 45, NSP 90, NSP 45, because they wipe off easy. And when I'm done wiping them off, I don't have to do a panel wipe. I can go right to, the, right coating. to the coating. Yeah, okay. that's some killer technology uh, Dr. Beasley's introduced. Okay, uh, Kyle Lowe. I would still love to get Mike's thoughts on the rotary, like a Flex 3403. I have both. I like and I know the 34 is everyone's go-to, but I would like to get better with the 34. Over. Well, there's nothing wrong with getting better with the rotary. Uh, rotaries are good skill great set. tools. Just don't, just don't be that guy that finishes every car with the rotary and then brags that he doesn't leave a, any holograms. Here's the deal, and, and I'm not going to name names, but there's some big names in our industry that agree with me, and here's what we think. Anytime you use a rotary buffer, you're putting a scratch pattern into the paint. Now, the human eye might not see it, but it's there. True. So you, with, with rotaries, you're putting holograms in. If you're working on a white car, probably won't ever see it, but they're there. So as a professional, you know, don't leave holograms in paint. It's kind of like the Hippocratical, Hippocratical oath that doctors take to first do no harm. With car detailing, do no harm. And here's the deal. If you leave a hologram, holograms, let's get, if let's really dial down. <laughs> holograms are scratches, okay? Mini and it, scratches. And from a horizontal point of view, a perfect finish is completely flat. As soon as you have scratches, you, you have voids, you know, going up and down in the paint. Again, looking at it from a horizontal point of view. Well, holograms would be thousands and thousands of scratches in the paint. You've opened up the surface. It's going to deteriorate faster than if it was completely flat. So here's my opinion in my own practice. I may start with a rotary, but I'll finish with any brand of orbital polisher, free spinning, gear driven, anything. Okay. Uh, that way I, the keyword is ensure. You ensure a hologram free finish that'll hold up over time. Might look good that day in the garage, but give it back to the customer. They start washing it, the holograms will show up. Okay. All right, cool. Um, we're pushing the two minute mark, so I'm going to kind of fly through these a little bit. Uh, Benji Davis, Mike Yancey, 341 in Malay, what are your thoughts and why? <laughs> you go first, I'll go second. Okay, I'll be real honest, I've used both tools and uh, whenever I got a detail of car, I, I guess I like eight millimeter over five millimeter. I don't think it really has nothing to do with the brand. I just feel like I'm able to, as I like to say, plow through a car, just, just move through that car as fast as I can. I know, I think on paper, the Malay has a higher OPM, um, but I think the three extra millimeters in um, throw and throw counter that and it, look I'm, I'm gonna use the tool that I feel like I'm getting the job done fastest with there's no brand loyalty to either one so I go with eight millimeter okay. had had flex or I mean had a um, Makita or had Rupes introduce a millimeter. I might be using that tool right now. It has okay. to do, it has to do with me is the is the millimeter drive. All right, cool. The only thing that I saw a difference is the took me a while to get used to the the trigger. Like I said, that was my first time using the Malay. Once I figured that out, that was, I found that you can actually feather. You can you know that was a neat little feature. I like that. Yeah. Um, well. One thing I do, and I teach in all my classes, is once you turn your tool on, lock it. Well, no, but that's what, yeah. I, that's what I was, the lock, where the lock was at, and where I was oh, ha gotcha, handling gotcha. I kept on knocking it off. Gotcha. So then once I learned where to yeah, not you put my hand. Yeah, you got to get used to the tool. Um, but I also like that the trigger on the Malay, that you can, you can actually feather it and hold it in at a certain RPM where you, instead, of, you could have it at six, but you could be yeah. actually spinning it at a one. And so that was kind of nice. I, I like that. Yeah. But I do like, hold on, hold on. I do like the, the, um, the wider, I felt like I could do more with yeah. the 3401, but then again, it's because I'm used to that tool more. Yeah. So I think if I got the Malay and it's actually It's the tool you really it. spend the time with. Yeah. Here, here's the deal. I would choose either one of these tools if I wanted to do production work like we just did here over any free spinning tool because I don't got to mentally think is the pad rotating? Is the you know think and I got to look and see is the pad rotating? Because with gear driven, it's going to rotate and oscillate no matter what. So I've just removed one whole thing I got to do from buffing out a car. I don't have to think about it. Mm -hmm. And the whole pad stalling issue. I mean, once you get good at the melee or the flex and know how to use that pad, you can tilt these things and go yeah, in. Yeah, that's yeah, that, I was doing it over there. You can get you it can up on an edge. 
Yeah, you could turn a, a, a six inch pad into a, a one inch pad, you know, yeah. once you spend enough time. I got a brand new article this year, it goes like this. If you spend enough time behind the tool, you can make a dance on paint. Oh, but that goes with any tool. Pour I'm going to start making t-shirts with all your sayings. On you should, it. yeah. <laughs> all right, let me go to the next one, because like I said, we're, okay. we're pushing to. Um, George, does AutoGeek sell a hard drive with all of Mike's knowledge and I can just plug it into my brain? Yeah, it's called YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> it's all on YouTube. Uh, da, 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 for the last passage, we, uh, okay. Kirby Thompson, for the last passage, would you include the chrome and glass for some uh, nice extra touch? For the last pass? Yeah, for last passage, would you include the chrome and glass for some nice extra touch? Well, well, I guess I think what Kirby's trying to say is at the end, would you come back and hit the chrome and the glass? And oh, with a there? dedicated product? Yeah. Um, I, 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 yeah. Kirby, good question. We did buff out all the glass, in case you missed that. If this had been a muscle car with chrome, I would have buffed it out with whatever pad I had on after I got done with, say, the hood, I would have hit the front bumper. Um, normally, I don't come back and hit the chrome, but I always put a coating. I use a uh, Pinnacle Black Label surface coating on all the glass of the cars I detail and my own stuff. Okay. Amazing stuff. All right, moving on. He has another, he has another one that was right after this, and I actually think that this is pretty good, and it's probably, we we're probably stumping some people out there because we're always talking about one thing, and then what we just did was a lot different. Um, I, uh, Kirby Thompson again. I noticed the arm speed goes quickly in this method. Does that work the same if you use a long throw two on a fast one step? The reason why we were, well, I was doing it is because I'm pushing down on that hard and what do you call it? I'm just moving that tool because I know I'm not having any problems with stuff. It's a good observation, but it's a, there's a combination, combination of things going on here. When I'm doing the long panels, I'm doing more passes than just, you know, with the, with the square panel, you can go cross hash one, two, three, and so on. With a long thin panel, I'm just going up and down it, so I'm going a little faster, but I'm doing more passes. And like Yancey said, because it's gear driven, we're pushing on these things. We're pushing yeah, we're the pushing abrasives hard. into the paint. That causes them to take a bite out of the paint and thus level it. You can't really do that with most free spinning tools because you'll they'll stall out. You, you can to a certain extent. It depends on the shape of the panel. I mean, you can take a Porter cable and you can press down 20 pounds as long as everything's flat and perpendicular. Tilt it to the side for a second, it'll quit rotating. Oh, so, oh, all right, all right. We have, but, we're, but, we're, but, get, we're getting called out. Hold on, we're getting called out. All right, pole. I'm not even going to say Verlinen. Why didn't you check with IPA to see if the defects were really gone? I don't need to. I've done this long enough. I can tell you they're gone. <laughs> now, he said so. I've been asked that question for 20 years now. And I could get the IPA. Heck, I'll do it. I got a panel wipe right over here. Would he be happy with a panel wipe? Panel wipe. Paul, you'd be happy with the panel wipe. We're, we're going we're gonna to do that. Panel wipe would be, but, but this is a good, this is Preco from IGL. All right. All right. Yeah. You know, uh, I think 10 years ago, some guy tried to call me out on that on the forum. And I went outside and actually wiped it down and took a shot in the sun. There were no swirls left. You know, uh, there has to be something to be said for, I don't know, three decades of experience. All right, well. Five books under my collar. Okay, all right. We're not, he's not beating me. He's just wanting to know why you didn't Oh, check. I got you. No, I don't need to. Don't uh, need to. He's, the reason why is we, he's kind of did this enough. Now get your little light out. But we do want to show that what we practice what we preach. Okay, okay, that was one wipe. You know, IGL, what do they call uh, this, I prep coat? I mean, it's some nice stuff. It's meant to remove polishing oils. This is a synthetic wax on here. Oh, and plus, what do you call it? The, the guy with this car gets off at 5, so we, we got to hurry up and get done. <laughs> 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 or is it 5.30? I can't remember now. It's an employee that works here. But the, here's the big picture. If I was going to do, if I was going to inspect, I would have done it in my test That's spot. Fine. Okay. And prove that it worked in the test spot, then instead, and I wouldn't have to do the whole car. All right. Boom. And there you go. Now the results you saw were the, the you know, move the letter. People a talk bit. about fillers and go. waxes. Naturally, fillers. See, if wax didn't fill, it didn't work. Cause it's supposed to put down a layer, put down a layer of protection. All right. So there yeah. we go, people. All right, let me pull another focus here. We could do the door, too. I mean, so you're getting the same results. Oh, no, it's fine. It, this is a good product. It has great abrasive technology. If it didn't, I wouldn't show it because I wouldn't trust it, and I'm not going to show people that something All I don't right. trust. All right. Um, good question. I asked you guys how long it took you. Eight hours, four hours from start to finish. Benji, you go, boy. Uh, Ruben, seven hours. George, eight hours, but do a slower arm speed. That's understandable. Um, if the defects are worse and the paint is hard, or the defects are deeper and the paint is hard, then you do use a slower arm speed. Right. So that way the abrasives are working against the finish 
longer in one area before the polisher moves forward. Uh, George got five hours. He's actually playing Candy Crush on his phone behind the car. You know it. That's what I was <laughs> doing back there. Uh, probably because this one step saves time. I guess you have to learn to trust your work. All right, Alan. Yes, what do you call it? Probably it's just a one step and in time, is, in time is money. That is true. Basically, what we're doing is this is a production detail. Um, that was the focus of the video. That was the whole focus of the video. Yeah, is, it wasn't about coatings or anything Yeah, no, like that. this was like... Most detailers out there, this is what they're pretty much going to be. This is their bread and butter. This is their staple. Every day, people are coming in getting this. It, it should be a knowledge and a skill yeah. set every detailer right. has. Not everybody wants a coating. Okay? Sometimes clean wax is the best thing. Uh, a different pads. Yancy is using yellow. Mike is using white. Yes, we had different. Uh, Steven, the Smith. Uh, well, Mille has its own dedicated yeah. pad. Yeah, we were, yeah, I was using root pads, pads with the root pads tool. And Mike was using Buff and China or Lake, 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 Lake Country, Country six and a half inch force hybrid. Yeah. And this is a thick pad, and I've been showing this for probably when did I write my flex book? Two thousand and it's been a while. Eight. <laughs> so I've been, been showing this pad for like twelve years of that tool. Yeah. It's a fine pad for that tool. There's a lot of pads that'll work with the flex. The flex B, the beast is not picky. You know, I would just say pick a thicker pad over a thinner pad. It'll just it'll re it'll transfer as a smoother action when you're buffing with it. Uh, then trust your work and be consistent. Chris Woolman, you cannot have said that any better. I'm sure he's not selling this as a perfect paint for correction. It is a quick one step, probably 50 to 60 defect removal. No, we no. did better. We did almost, almost I, all I'd of say 95% yeah. defect removal um, easily. But we did do a test spot, get the results you sold, then trust your work and be consistent. That is exactly what production detailing yep. is all about. Thank you for saying that, Chris. You're Good the job. man, bro. You're the man. Well worded. Um, it's amazing the correction you can get with a one step using a 341. Yes, that is true. Uh, if you click on the see more link, there's a description of the equipment involved in the 341. Yep, that is all, all the products are listed. The only thing I didn't list, it, list there was the pads. That was because I wasn't sure what pads we were using for it yet because we didn't do the test spot. So. Um, pop, 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 pop. Showing they get the same results from different tools. See, you can do the same thing, different tools. Oh, when I have my big classes, like I've had classes with uh, 26 people in it and, and, and put different tools. I do a class on, on this topic, one step production detailing. Take 26 people, let them pick any tool they want, give them the same product, and every car, two or three cars, all come out the same way. They come out yep. perfect. That's, that is typical of all my classes. All the cars always come out perfect because, A, we use good products that use great abrasive technology. We hone down the technique till it's, you know, it's, te it's textbook technique. And the tools we use are all brand name tools. I mean, you match the pad to the product. I mean, once you dial in everything, you can't help but get good results. But mm -hmm. I'll tell you one thing, it all starts with whatever mm -hmm. touches mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. surface, okay? A lot of guys say it's technique. I'm so good. That what they're saying is I'm so good. You're not touching the paint. It's the product, the compound, the polish, or the AIO. Whatever touches the paint is going to really determine the end result. Use crap for products, you're going to get crap results. Use great products, you're going to get great results. All right. Um, Brian Steffens, you remember Brian? A shout out to Mike Phillips, a member of one of his California competition ready teams. Oh, okay, yeah. Remember you, Brian? Uh, that was our TV show for anybody who watched this. It was competition ready. Okay, Kyle, let's go back to Kyle. How does Blackfire One Step compare to Sonex PF? Because I haven't used anything better than the Sonex. Well, Perfect Finish is a dedicated compound for use with rotary buffers. It has no wax protection at all. So they're, you're comparing apples to oranges. This product leaves behind a synthetic sealant, so thus it is an AIO, all in one. Cleans, polishes, and protects. Sonex Perfect Finish, or PF, it's like a medium, it's a medium cut, polish and is specifically formulated for use with the rotary buffer. A lot of guys use it with DA and get great results, but it's, it's not the same category as this. When you're done with PF, you'd have to put a wax on, a synthetic sealant, or strip the paint, put a coating on. You'd have to do something to protect the paint. Okay. That is a water-soluble product. Uh, all right. um, yes, Renardo, Mike is breathing hard because he's getting old. A1 <laughs> <laughs> uh, Towie, Towie. Could you repost the links to the videos on microfiber towel care and cleaning? They're all listed in, if you go- um, The playlist. The playlist on YouTube, they're all there. Uh, it's under Mike Phillips Files, it's Auto Geek Uncensored. There's two playlists that they're in. They're also all over on the Auto Geek Facebook page. If you go under live videos, they'll all be right there. Um, or if not, you can just search. If you're in Detailing 101, you can search the group and it'll show if, pop yeah, up If you go too. to Skynet and type in <laughs> how and why to inspect your microfiber towels and now my name, Mike Phillips, it'll pull right up. 
Okay, um, this is a good one. What are the main differences between the two machines used today? Which do you recommend if you only could have one? I think we've just covered it. Eight versus eight five millimeter, millimeter versus five millimeter, millimeter is the primary difference. They're both gear driven tools. You know, power wise, in, what are the power? In the, uh, the, you know, the power is probably pretty close. It's not enough to be a deal changer. One's five millimeter, one is eight millimeter, one is flex, one is rupes. People have a lot of strong brand loyalty to both of these brands. So if you're a Flex guy, go with the Beast. If you're a Rupes guy, go with the Melee. But at the end of the day, you become an expert by spending time behind the polisher. Okay. I can make any one of these tools dance on paint, but I couldn't do it the first time I used one. Um, is the B pillar painted? No, it was painted. Um, uh, would you consider, okay, Matthew. Oh, why isn't it let me? I guess I can't add you to the broadcast. Huh. Why would you consider the one step that you did to be different from any other one step paint correction other than that? Oh, uh, because I test everything on black paint and uh, products that use poor abrasive technology when you it will leave micro marring that you can vis see visibly with your eyes. If you chemically strip it, you can see it. And that's just a sign of poor abrasive technology. So before I show anything in the class, on TV, in a video, using my own car, I test it on black paint, chemically strip it, and make sure it's good to go. And I'm telling you from experience that there's, a, there's, there's fewer great AI ones than uh, there are a lots of great AI ones. And that also holds true for compounds and polishes. Um, and people always ask me, you know, I can't, we sell a lot of stuff here. If you see me using it, it uses great abrasive technology. I would not show a product that I wouldn't use on a black All car. Right. That I uh, I'm going to piggyback off of this because there's a couple questions in here that sure. are kind of related to the same thing. Um, how does this work on soft, hard, and, well, this is like the sweet right. spot. It'd be it's the same. Same, same. So it'd there's be there's the same. So if you had a, if, when you're working on paint, it comes down to, besides tool, pad, and chemical, paint hardness and depth of defects. Okay, if you had light swirls, you know, on a hard paint, you'd probably be able to pull that out with the Black Fire 170 polishing pad. If you had really deep scratches, someone washed it with the broom, and you're using the same combinations, you'd have to jump up to the cutting pad and push harder to make more passes. Okay. So the abrasive technology is one of the factors that'll stay the same. The other variables are things that you can change. Okay. And if you couldn't get it in with the one step, then you would be stuck going to a dedicated compound and possibly- Then you'd be going to a two step. Well, a fiber pad right. and okay. doing two steps, whether you use a microfiber pad on a DA or a wool pad on a rotary. Okay, all right, let me get a couple more here. Um, how long, this, is, this has been asked a couple times. Uh, I'm going to go off of Frankie Hurley here. How long does a black fire one step protect? You know, most guys say they get about three months on a daily driver parked outside seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Okay. So uh, everything, how long anything lasts comes to how you touch it. If you run the car through a swirl matic car wash versus wash it carefully by hand, it's, nothing's going to last as long. So it just comes down to how you wash it. And there's, there's a cure for that. There's some amazing car washes out there like the Wolfgang SIO2 Two, yeah, and then Uber Wash. I mean, it lays down ceramic every time you use it. It's an amazing product. Okay, Benji Davis, I'm gonna kind of comp compare, uh, the, combine both of these together. Uh, so because you had force rotation, you didn't grab any mini polishers, three, two, one inch. They are weaker polishers, and I get there, that there's a need for these mini sometimes, but are there more gimmicks in your opinion? Maybe or just a higher level of corrections that no, cost more? No, um, I use the micro tools all the time it, when I need it. But if I can just go up on edge with the beast, I do. All right. uh, but I, I, would, I, would, I, would, I would just correct you on something. When I go online, I always see guys talk about the beast as being forced rotation. That's so wrong. Forced rotation's a rotary buffer. Forced rotation. Yeah, both of them this is it. oscillation, it rotates and oscillate, so it's forced rotation and forced oh, well, oscillation. Well. Two actions, not one. But check me if I'm right, every time you see some guy talk about it, he goes, oh, it's a forced rotation. Correct him, say, hey, dude, you're talking about a rotary buffer. Um, boot clap. <laughs> I guess I'm a word guy, I do a lot of writing. Um, where are we at with your classes? Do we have, we My next class is in September. It's a three-day class. It's the last week of the September. It's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And on Monday, I do skills validation for the IDA. But, no, I understand that. But oh. is it, as of now, it's still on? It's still on, in, yeah. In the, unless, yep. unless the I recommend everybody get flight insurance. So if it is canceled, you don't lose your yeah. airline tickets. Because I usually got people that fly in from around the country and around the world to take these classes. Um, Chunk of change. All right, Benji, you lied. <laughs> 
One more. I use a bunch <laughs> of pads, right? So how do you feel about a pad washer? Uh, I, I, pad washers were great, but they're for at the end of the day. You cannot wash a pad and then put it back on the tool because it's wet. Right. You then need, you're just contradicting yourself. You need dry pads. So it's something you'd use at the end of the day. And that's the reason why yeah. we kept swapping out every you panel. Swap, yeah, it's better to just, yeah. And for me, you know, I used to not tell people this, but I, nowadays I just throw caution to the wind. I throw everything in the washing machine, but I throw like pads in the washing machine with like pads. Like these, these have a water insoluble cleaning wax on them. I would not throw these in a, a, a tub or a wash in the washer with pads I use with a water soluble compound. So uh, usually around here, we do things on scale that I've got enough pads to make a small, medium, or, or large load where all the pads were used with the same chem chemical, no matter what the size or the type. But then I just, I usually have enough pads to keep them all in the same type, product used, wash load. All right, and, um, we're gonna do one more. And this is a small difference, but you know, I'm kind of OCD about cleaning pads and cleaning floors and folding towels. Um, Ivan, we'll ha end it on yours, your question. <laughs> I'm less um, OCD about actually detailing cars. But he's lazy. That's what he keeps but saying. But I do mark but he, all but my he's really not. Yeah. Um, Ivan, if I remember your name, um, can you use, his, his is a question, he goes, can you use um, one step with a rotary? Uh, yeah, you can, but rotary always imparts a hologram swirl, so you can use it fine, but you're going to leave a swirl. You're going to end up doing another step. Yep. Might as well just get a, the beast and just be done with it. You know what we should do is after this is over, whoever asks the most questions, send them a free something, like a free bottle of whatever we're using, one step. Yeah, that, I think that'd be better. If you're Davis. in the lower 48 states, because I've done contests where I'm sending stuff to Vietnam and things like that, <laughs> and then I, it's New, uh, New Zealand, and now I'm getting in trouble for shipping. If you're in the lower 48 states, whoever asks the most questions, you could tie them up. I'll send you a bottle of Blackfire. This one's pretty much still full. Yeah, no, I really didn't use that much. Yeah, maybe it's 40 we'll, bucks. We'll, we'll give away both of our bottles. Okay, two we'll, people. You, well, I'll sign one, you sign one. Okay. Ha! We'll see who goes to eBay and gets money back. I, I hope that helped everybody. You know, um, uh, I, probably some people got into, into this. The whole idea here is we taught uh, production detailing. That's using the AIO or a cleaner wax, whatever you want to call it, and you just go around the car one time. You don't promise show car results. If you're detailing for money, you have another package, yeah, no, two or three packages, and you sell them a higher package for show car detailing. You know, so this is your entry level package. And I tell guys they should aim for about 100 bucks an hour when detailing cars. So normally if I was down here by myself from start to finish, washing, doing wheels and tires, wheels and tires and washing the car is almost two hours. Because mm -hmm. if the tires are dirty, you're going to be 15 Especially minutes. Especially some of them that never washed their tires You're going to be before. 15 minutes for each wheel and tire. 15 times four is an hour. So, right. so washing the car is about two hours. Then doing the outside, the glass, the plastic, the trim, another three hours, five hours, 100 bucks yeah. an hour, 500 bucks. That's what I charge. You guys can charge whatever you want to. I meet a lot of guys that charge 150 and 200. But what I'm telling you is, if you want to do this to make money, you got to get up to where, at the end of the day, you're making on average about 100 bucks an hour, because that's going to offset the cost, cost of everything, of everything else, else you labor. use. Yeah. And if you're doing coatings, I really haven't uh, come to grips on the coatings yet. But I almost kind of want to make the customer have, you know, pick the coating and then charge. Well, this is what that coating costs. So yeah, cause it's above and beyond what techniques. the package costs. Cause you start building coatings into your prices and you're out a hundred bucks. Uh -huh. All right. But well, on that, I'm going to, uh, officially it's five o'clock. Yeah. Right on five o'clock. That means it's five o'clock here. And now I have <laughs> five o'clock until the 13th That's right. to celebrate. Yes, he let the cat out of the bag. I was gonna do a nice little thing next week, but he kind of ruined my little thing. Um, both him and I are on vacation. Uh, yes. So we will be back on the 13th, and we will, next week's uh, live detailing class has already been recorded. Yes. And I'll be posting it at, at three o'clock. Well, actually, I'm scheduling the post. Hey, I'm I not gonna sit in and watch. Well, well <laughs> you can sit here and watch it. If you wanna do your laundry. <laughs> Um, but so we will be gone. Um, we're giving away the one step. Now that sounds like a good idea. We'll yeah. give that away. I will go through and either whoever answered the que most questions or well, maybe I'll put your name in a random generator. So that way it's a little bit more fair. And uh, we'll get you guys sent out. Um, post, post where state you're in, I guess, because he said lower 48. So we lower have to stick in the low. Yeah. So your name and your state where you're at, and then we'll pick you from there and we'll do a random generator from there. Yeah. 
Um, Everybody likes the contest. Surprise. Free prize. A free prize. And so other than that, again, thank you very much for tuning in. We are so happy that you guys are doing this. These are all turning out to be very successful. Getting a lot of positive feedback from you guys, so I really appreciate everything. Comments, questions down below, ideas for other videos, topics that you want us to cover. He'll point out the knowledge. I'll just make sure you see it. Maybe next time we should do what a package two looks like. Oh. If you guys want to see a package, this was package But we'll one. already have it compounded. We're not going to make you go through the whole <laughs> compound. We're going to make you watch it. No. This, would be package, this is package one, though. Yeah, this would be package one. All right, so with that being said, it. it is officially vacation time, right? Vacation time? <sighs> Five o'clock somewhere. All right, so <laughs> right here. I, I say that we go, um, I might have brought in a blender and a mixer, so uh, I say we go this way, and y'all, see you in two weeks. Thanks for tuning in. Margarita.